Why is it important to know the quality and structure of soil in various parts of the country? At the end of this lesson, you should be able to distinguish various types of soil and identify the areas they are found in India. Describe the process of soil formation. Compare the properties of different types of soil. State the features of various types of soil. Jack is on a study tour visiting various places in our country. He is in a village in Haryana. Jack is surprised to see the type of soil in the village which is so different from the other village in central Maharashtra he visited last week. I really wonder why the soil in different places differs so much. Let us try to get an answer looking at the relief map of our country. Recall how the highlighted area on the map was formed. Highlighted area on the map represents the plateau region which was formed due to a volcanic eruption taken place 67 to 65 million years ago. Thus, soil present here is made up of volcanic lava. On the other hand, soil in northern plains of the country is formed with the sediment carried by the rivers. Hence, types of soil found in different areas depend on various factors such as parent rock, terrain, climate, forest cover, etc. that differ in different parts of the country. It is important to know the quality and structure of soil in various areas. Why is it so important? It is important to know the soil structure of an area for the following reasons. For conducting agricultural activities, for developmental projects like roads or building construction, to know the vegetation pattern, etc. Let us learn the process of soil formation. Parent material is the main material that the soil develops from. The characteristics and chemical composition of the parent material plays an important role in determining the properties of soil. Repetitive changes in temperature create cracks on the parent rocks. Rainfall further helps in enlarging the cracks in the rocks. Action of running water, wind and glacier with respect to relief further disintegrate the rocks into smaller particles and transport them from one place to another. Organisms like fungi, bacteria act as a decomposer and play key roles in formation of a healthy soil that supports life. Chemical and organic changes take place in the process of soil formation that may undergo for millions of years. There are various other factors that play important role in the process of soil formation. Can you infer some of such factors that influence the process of soil formation? Climate Temperature affects the rate of chemical activity, the type of vegetation grown on the soil. Temperature also determines the rate of freezing and thawing. Rainfall affects leaching, the removal of soluble materials from a substance. Rainfall also helps in movement of clay. Biological activity Macroorganisms such as microscopic plants and animals act as decomposer. Living and dead plants and animals too add organic matters. Parent material for residual soil disintegration depends on hard or soft parent rocks. Secondly, organic content of the parent rock add organic material to soil. Mineral present in parent rocks gives color and texture. In case of transported soil carried by wind, water and glacier, parent rock determines the qualities of the eroded soil. Topography Relief determines rate of erosion. Water, wind and glacier determine the rate of disintegration, erosion and transportation. Time Creates layers in the soil and determine the soil profile. Do you know that about 35 to 40 percent of soil is made of air and water? Consider the following two locations. Location A is a field is located on a slight slope with exposure to the northern side. The parent material, which is coarse gravel, is fairly close to the surface of the soil, approximately 24 inches deep. The field is grazed by cattle. 
Location B is a farm covered with mature hardwood trees. It is flat land but not located near a stream. The parent material here too is coarse gravel and is located about 3 to 4 feet below the surface. Can you tell me which of these areas will result in faster soil formation and why? Yes, that is location B. Firstly, location B is a plain flat land and covered with trees, thus less prone to erosion. Secondly, parent material in location B is deeper than the location A, which means it is covered with new layers of soil. In location B, added organic matter by the trees help in faster soil formation. Soil profile is the vertical arrangement of layers of soil down the bedrock. Each specific layer in the soil profile, which measures parallel to the soil surface and possesses physical characteristics which differ from the layers above and beneath, is called a soil horizon. A horizon formation is a function of a range of geological, chemical and biological processes that occurs over long periods of time. Topsoil The uppermost layer of the soil consists of all living and non-living organisms. Subsoil Second layer consists of weathered rock, sand, silt and clay. Substratum this is the third layer of soil consisting of weathered parent rock material, unweathered parent bedrock, rock present in its original position. On what basis you distinguish these two types of soil? Soil can be classified into various types based on some distinguishing characteristics which include color of the soil, Factors responsible for soil formation like parent material, climate, biological activity, topography, time, thickness of the soil, texture which is based on the materials that the soil is made up of, age of the soil, chemical and physical properties. Soil in India can be classified as alluvial, black or riga, forest and mountain, red and yellow, laterite and arid. Alluvial soil is again divided into two types, bunga or old alluvium with more concar nodules. Kadar or new alluvium consists finer particles and it is more fertile. Let us look at the map of India and find out how soil changes from region to region. What type of soil may occur in the highlighted region? Yes. Alluvial soil is found in northern plains of Ganga, Brahmaputra and Indus and the coastal plains mainly the deltas of Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. Black soil is found in Deccan Trap region covering plateaus of Maharashtra, Saurashtra, Malwa, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Red and yellow soil is found in eastern and southern parts of Deccan Plateau, parts of Orissa, Chhattisgarh southern parts of Middle Ganga Plain and parts of Western Ghats. Laterite soil is found in Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh and the hilly areas of Orissa and Assam. Can you guess the type of soil found in this region? Yes, the type of soil found in Rajasthan and parts of Gujarat are arid sandy soil. Forest soil is found in hilly and mountainous areas of Jammu and Kashmir. Uttaranchal, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. Now, let us know the properties of the various types of soil. Alluvial soil, made up of sand, silt and clay, dark brown in color, high moisture content, presence of minerals such as potash, phosphoric acid and lime, very fertile in nature, formed from alluvial carried down by the rivers. Black soil, made up of extremely fine clay materials. Black in color, holds good amount of moisture, contains minerals such as calcium carbonate, magnesium, potash and lime, fertile in nature, formed from the parent materials made of lava. Red and yellow soil, made up of silt, sand and thin organic material, reddish in color due to diffusion of iron, unable to preserve moisture, rich in iron, magnesium, less fertile, 
acidic in nature. The soil is formed from the decomposition of crystalline rocks like granite, gneisses, iron and magnesium. Laterite soil made up of silt and organic materials, rusty red in color due to presence of iron oxide, least moisture retentive, contains minerals such as aluminium and iron, less fertile, acidic in nature, formed by intense leaching of rocks due to heavy rainfall and high temperature. Arid soil, sandy in texture, brown in color, lacks moisture, contains minerals like calcium, saline in nature and least fertile, formed by disintegration of rocks due to diurnal changes in temperature and fast evaporation. Forest soil, made up of coarse grain, loam and silt, brown to dark brown in color. Average moisture content, presence of minerals such as limestone, dolomite, etc. Nature varies according to height. Acidic in nature, formed from disintegration of parent rocks depending on the level of altitude. We need to know about the soil type to grow different types of crops. Rice, wheat, sugarcane, pulses are grown in alluvial soil. Black soil supports cotton and groundnut cultivation. Groundnut, millet, ragi, potato, rice, wheat, sugarcane are grown in red soil. Laterite soil supports cashew nut, spices, tea, coffee and rubber cultivation. Jowar, bajra, barley, gram, wheat are grown in irrigated areas of arid soil. Forest soil is suitable for tea, coffee and rubber plantation. What do you observe here? At certain places, the soil seems to have blown away or washed out. This process of disintegration and denudation of the topsoil and subsequent washing down or transportation from one place to another is known as soil erosion. There are some natural agents that cause soil erosion. These are wind, water and glacier. Human activities such as deforestation, overgrazing, mining and defective farming aggravate the process. Can you infer the impact of soil erosion? The main impact of soil erosion is reduction of soil quality that results from the loss of nutrient-rich upper layers of soil and the reduced water-holding capacity of the eroded soil. In addition to this, soil that is transported to other regions can create off-site problems like silting up of dams, disruption of ecosystems and contamination of drinking water, etc. What difference do you see in these images? These are various types of soil erosion, sheet erosion, gully erosion and wind erosion. When water flows as a sheet over a large area down the slope, washing away the topsoil, it is called as sheet erosion. Sheet erosion commonly occurs on recently ploughed fields or on poorly consolidated soil material with scant vegetative cover. Sometimes, the running water cuts through the clay soil, making deep channels known as gullies. Consequently, the land becomes unfit for cultivation and known as bad land. The ravines of Chumbal Valley is one such example. Sometimes, the soil particles on the flat or sloping land surface are lifted and blown off. This type of erosion is known as wind erosion. This kind of erosion is prominent in dry, sandy western part of the country. Let us have a look at stark reality of Majuli. Do you know that one of the largest freshwater islands in the world, Majuli, is located in the river Brahmaputra and is facing a serious issue of soil erosion? The island is under threat due to the extensive soil erosion on its banks due to large embankments built in neighboring towns upriver to prevent erosion there during the monsoon season when the river distends its banks. The result of this is a black clash of the tempestuous Brahmaputra's fury on the island eroding most of the area. According to reports, in 1853, the total area of Majuli was 1150 square kilometers 
and about 33% of this landmass has been eroded in the later half of the 20th century. Since 1991, over 35 villages have been washed away. Surveys show that in 15 to 20 years from now, Majuli would cease to exist. To save the island, the Union Government of India has sanctioned 250 crores and has also sent a petition to UNESCO for the declaration of Majuli as the World Natural Heritage Site. Let us know some of the effective measures to control soil erosion. Contour plowing. Plowing along the contour lines decelerate the flow of water. Terrace farming. Terraces are made for farming in western and central Himalayas to restrict erosion. Strip cropping. Strips of grass are left to grow between the crops to break up the force of wind. Shelter belt. Planting lines of trees to create shelter prevents the force of wind in desert areas. Planting trees is the only solution to the problem of soil erosion and let us pledge to do our bit to it.